you have to have, I believe in God first and foremost, man. And when you make a vow before God that you go marry this woman, you can't treat her like a toss-up, dog. Hell no. You can't treat her like a toss-up. That's the mother of your kids. That's your wife. That's your soulmate. Yeah. That's supposed to be all. You, any, if anything, her messing with the, another dude is supposed to send you into a fit of rage. You feel what I mean? Right. I think that, like everybody said, I think it's been around for a minute. It's just, you know, the internet exposes it and put it on steroids now. And I don't knock nobody. You know, I got to put my disclaimer out there. You know, I got, I don't care what nobody do in the privacy of their bedroom, whatever floats your boat. And if you and your husband cool with it, it ain't none of my business. Right. But I just think it's a lot of weird stuff going on. And me and Glass is always getting arguments because I tell them about certain people in the industry mm -hmm. that you might look up to. And I say, bro, no. Nah. No, you know, this dude, man, no, still, you lying. You lying. How you know, man? I'm telling you, I just know. Some stuff you just know. You feel what I'm saying? Well, let, let me drop this one on you. I know a, a lowrider car show uh, model from years ago, and I think, I won't say her name, but I believe you know who she is. I'll tell you guys after. Yeah, you know who she is because he started yeah. laughing as soon as you said it. Well, she's been my friend for a long time. She was on my I'm Not Your Puppet video, okay? So I'll leave that clue. She was dating this one boxer, a real wealthy boxer. I'll name him after as well. And uh, she told me, because she, she would always talk to me. She goes, oh, I went to this club with him. And I said, really? She goes, and we were sitting down at a booth. It was him and then another guy. And I dropped my purse. So when I bent down to grab my purse, I looked. And he was holding hands like this with that dude. He goes, so I said, you know what? I'll be back. I'm going to go take a walk around and then she started naming everybody that she saw there and I said what kind of club was this she goes it was a gay club mm. she named rappers that I looked up to that were there so when she went up to him because she knew them because of me what are you doing here oh we just come here to network network for sure yeah, they trying to network network their ass into some yeah. free shit I, I, I met some record executives that wanted to sign some of the groups that I was working with. I'm all fucking with you tonight, Steel. <laughs> that, that would tell me, oh, yeah, that rapper and that rapper, they come over to sleep over all the time. I cook them breakfast. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What's this thing about grown men spending the night over each other's house like they little kids? There's a lot of freaky shit going on in this motherfucker tonight, dog. Man, you just silenced me in this episode, man. You got me also, yeah, I'm just quiet as a church mouth with you. <laughs> oh, man, we, we, we going to be off of this. We going to be off. Yeah, what's up? What about the way they rated him, though? Y'all think that was necessary with the tanks and the AKs and all that shit? Yeah, with because you know Brian, he, he loved doing that. So I'm going to repeat that for, for those who might not have heard it. Do you think that they were overboard with the way they came at Diddy? Nah, it's deeper than that. It's, I'm telling you. It's, it's uh, what's that dude? Uh, Epstein? Epstein, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, yeah, it's on some shit like that. Oh yeah, for sure. I heard he was the. I heard Puffy is the plug, man. Yeah, and yeah. he started probably the Black Epstein. Yeah, when you get when when you get accusations, you know, because motherfuckers, you know, they don't want to go the the regular court route because you know they won't go the civil route because I won't be able to give me some bread. But motherfuckers is kick. They peeping everything that's going on in the civil case. And now they reading shit like, what? This nigga said this happened and what this and that and whatever. So now they like, nigga, we need to jump in here and see what's, what's going on. To tell you there. the truth, me and my boy Fats was talking, I think R. Kelly is spilling the beans on everybody. You know, he might be, he might He's be like, like y'all wasn't there for me? Yeah. <laughs> Sammy the bull your ass. I, it, it, it's, it's, like I said, it was try. It was it was a money. It was a money play. You get me, mother? Because motherfuckers who felt like if he paid her off, I I I, I done seen a few things. So let me go. But see, by the end, once he done gave out the first check, now he feeling like you know. All the mother niggas are small potatoes. I got rid. of, You know, right. I paid off the big fish. Mm -hmm. So. Anybody else come say some shit, I'ma just deny, deny. You know what I think happened, man? I think, I always tell people, be careful how you treat people on the way up. Mm -hmm. Because see, it's one thing to fall off this table. It's a whole nother thing to fall off this roof. So the bigger you are, the harder your fall is gonna be, right? And I think he pissed somebody off, dog. 
He, he pissed, pissed homegirl off. Had her doing all that freaky deaky shit. Not just, she said, I'm going to get my bread for all not that. Not just her. Weird you know, shit. Luke saying, I was hearing the homie Luke, shout out to the homeboy Luther Campbell. Mm -hmm. He was talking about, you know, the, um, what was the brand he had? What was the, um, the, the Ciroc? The people from Ciroc, the company, you know, he was involved in a lawsuit with them or whatever, and he accused them of being racist. And some people ain't, you know, when you get to just dragging, trying to drag certain people that got money, dog, they'll put you in your place real quick. Yeah, you know, you become a liability, bro, and then you figure, like you said, he might have been involved with that Epstein dude. Because, you know, when they put out that list of those people that were going to that island, they had a lot of people's names on that list. Crazy. And, and then I don't know what they doing. I don't like talking about Jay and Beyonce because I don't know their business. I don't know their household. You feel what I mean? Mm -hmm. They seem like normal people, but their names is on that list, bro. Yeah. If a dude is in, my thing is this, dogs hang with dogs. You don't ever see a, a, a pack of cats and dogs running the street together. You see dogs running together. You see stray cats running together. You feel what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you got a motherfucker that's doing real hedonistic shit and just on some next level perversion shit, and you hanging out with him, you see people with him, more than likely they into the same shit. Right. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't know. I'm not here. You know, I'm not trying to get no clicks by throwing <laughs> Jay's name out there. But it was a lot of people on that list, man. And I think that people really, I think people really be selling their souls, man. Oh yeah. People be really selling their souls, you know, I I'ma tell you. That's that hidden curtain class, you get mm -hmm. me? You know how you go somewhere and it's the hidden curtain and you can't go back there because you on, you ain't on the list, you ain't a member, You that's that that's that class, man. You don't yeah, that's to, that special you don't club. You cross that rope, man. Mm -hmm. Behind that rope and that curtain, nigga, there's some wild shit going on. You don't wanna go behind the green door. You don't wanna go behind there still? No, it's not at all, man. Just a peek. No, I don't even want to peek, bro. <laughs> just, just peek your head even, in for a I don't even want to peek my head <laughs> in for a minute. Not for no amount of money, not for no type of fame or popularity. You, know, you, you had like uh -huh. two hundred you had like two, three hundred million. You wouldn't be you wouldn't have you a small island oh, no, bro. running around with weird shit on. Like, no. Playing like you back in Africa, just for just running. No, I'm cool. I'm gonna tell you, what's the dude's name? Because you had got into producing films and stuff, right? Yeah. You got a producing because you produced the Romeo documentary. What's the guy's name that produced the Will Smith, um, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and a lot of these TV shows? Uh, Benny Medina. Benny Medina. Now, you always have to follow the certain trail of stuff. Every rapper that got cracking in the 80s that went broke and got a TV show, you ever notice they went big? Yeah. Anybody that's messing with Benny Medina that went big? It's a such thing as selling your soul for fame, dog. Right. For popularity. Because I'm not going to put names. The people go do their own research for what I'm saying. Yeah. But, but you had big rappers going broke in the early days of hip-hop. You know, they making a making million dollars. They kids, though, and then they broke, right? Right. So you get this dude to offer them opportunity. Hey, man, I'm going to put you on TV. I'm going to give you a couple million dollars, put you back up, but you got to do this, this, and that. These people do the this, this, and that because it's already in them. Yeah. And they may have been doing it before. You feel what I'm saying? Or may not have had the thing or maybe have been in denial about who they were. You feel what I mean? Right. Or they may not be that way, but they just there for the pay. You feel what I'm saying? It's a lot of wicked stuff that goes on, man. And um, I ain't just gonna say Hollywood, but just in, just in that world, dog, where it's millions of dollars and being, you know, spent around, they can just press buttons and make stuff happen. Right. Like, 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 um, I say it's like a motherfucker who start off smoking some stress weed and he keep excelling because it ain't never enough. And now you know a nigga shooting needles up and doing all kind of weird shit because the high just ain't enough. You need, I right. need to get higher. That's them motherfuckers. That's them, bro, they get that. Some normal pussy or some normal uh, dick or whatever, that, that ain't enough. I need a motherfucker running around here in a rabbit suit, nigga, with his asshole out and nigga sniffing cocaine off his balls or some weird shit. Oh, man, I'm gonna tell you, one of the homies, man, that's a bodyguard, right? I've been trying to get him to come on the show, dog. He won't do it, dog. I ain't even gonna say his name, put him out there. He told me, man, he was working, and I can't say the names of the people because he gonna get the trip. I'm like, still, you talking too much. But he said he was working for this one individual that's a sports icon. Mm -hmm. 
hell, own NFL team. He said that he was doing some work for him, and he said, you know, he got in, he was like one of the top, you know, guards, so he's in the house. And then at the night, he said, man, every Friday night, man, it would be a motherfucker come in there in a costume, like, you know, get dressed up like Fred Flintstone and knock this dude's wife down. Like, put on the whole Fred well, Flintstone Fred cartoon. Here. Fred, well, it's just uh, a lot of weird stuff. Man. It's a lot of weird, crazy stuff, I man. That's, I told, that's that, 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 that rope, that curtain. You want to go behind there, man. Stay on this side, man. Be no, it's okay to be normal. It's okay, and I'm cool with being an average vanilla motherfucker. <laughs> I'm a, I'm cool I'm cool with being average. So Tony, you and Croft is doing your thing. You produced that whole album. You and him both, yes, you know? uh, except two songs. Quick did the other two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but that's how we started. Now keep in mind, and I do want to say this, because I was just a mixtape guy. I didn't know anything about production, absolutely nothing. So when we did, I'm not your puppet. That was Steve's idea. He said, Tony, let's do an original song to put on a mixtape for High C. I didn't know anything about production. I had a Newmark mixer that had a sampler. So I just sampled the bar. I, I remember I sampled like Impeach the President. Mm -hmm. And then I threw it on my four track Porta One uh, task cam. Then I got the record on at your pub and it's a four bar loop. So the SP12 is not gonna sample that. So I had to ride that motherfucker on time, stop, go back, go to another track, you know, on time. That's crazy. For about four minutes. Mm -hmm. High C comes over and he's just, freestyling some bullshit, some funny shit. And Steve said, that's dope, let's go with that. And I was like, we're just fucking around. No, let's go with that. All right, cool, whatever. So we put it on the mixtape, and I remember that mixtape so like fucking hotcakes at the rodeo. He would pay me like 200 bucks per mixtape, so we would do once, one every month because we had allowed new music to come out. Mm -hmm. so, um, so he said, that one's so really good, let's do another one. So I just flipped the records over and sit in the park where Billy Stewart was on there. I just sampled Substitution, my Newmark mixer, dropped it again. He did the fucking lyrics. So and then uh, I still remember the guy's name, Stuart Cohen. He worked for uh, uh, Disney. They had just opened up a record label called Hollywood Records. Mm -hmm. so they, I remember that. So, I remember Stuart. Yeah. So, so they come to, um, to the Rhodium and they pretty much, they show Steve the tape and they go. It was Chuck and Stewart. I believe so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he says, um, who did this tape? And Steve said, uh, he did it, and he pointed at me. And we always thought it was people gonna bust us for uh, selling bootlegs. Mm -hmm. so, so he pointed at your ass and said, he the one that did that shit. Yes, and then I said, yeah, but he sells them. Mm -hmm. you know? So he said, no, no, I'm looking for that guy right here, it says, hi, C, because I named the, the tape after him. And I, he goes, I'm looking for him. We just opened up a new record label and we're looking to sign him. You know, this got dropped into my lap at the office. So I said, well, I could take you to him. So we went. And uh, the weirdest part, bro, we didn't hear from that dude's ass, from his ass for like six months, bro. By that time, my mom had kicked me out. I was like curb serving. I was just a nickel and diamond, bro. So she found what little dope I had, what little money I had, and she kicked me out. I had a tank top, I had a broken wrist, some green Ben Davis and some Nike Cortez, and I was just staying from house to house. Then one of my homeboys hits me up and he goes, hey, Steve called me, he's in Florida, and uh, he wants to talk to you tonight. He's gonna call me in about an hour, he wanted me to find you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, for what? And he says, I don't know, he wants to talk to you. So this was on a Friday, I believe. So we go to his house, Steve calls me from Florida, I'm flying in over the weekend, Hollywood Records wants to meet us on Monday. And I was like, for what? He wanted to give us a record deal a record deal. He goes, remember that guy that came to the swap And I go, yeah, that guy wants to give us a record deal. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, what? Well, like, does that involve money? And he was like, yeah, they want to give us 40,000 for a single and then a hundred thousand for the album. If the single sells good. So I was like, all, all right then, but I don't have a ride over there. Don't worry. I'll pick you up. So he came all the way from Whittier to Wilmington to Burbank. And then that's when we met, and that's the first day I actually even met Funkin' Klein. You guys remember Funkin' Klein? Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Funkin' Klein. He opened up Hollywood Basic at, at Disney. So they signed us, and then that's how I started. That's how I was forced to become a producer, and I knew nothing about producing. So I just started learning how to sample. And it, the, the crazy part about that record was this, that it was my first time out. I thought I was experimenting. I gave him my best, and we ended up getting a gold record.
like Pinocchio. We gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Extra honest players, this is not your average show.